Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Thursday evening episode of Ted's Bootsler, or a rather late afternoon I should say. Uh, it's just after, well it's just around about 5.30 today uh, on the, what date? 31st of yeah. August in the year of our Lord 2023. Hoping I find you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not then I hope things improve very, very promptly. Uh, now we've got another guest today uh, and this is another debutante, uh, so why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Ben, I, uh, I'm a work colleague of, of our lovely host, and um, yeah, I live in Brighton, just kind of, just, just chilling. You, you froze up for almost a second, like you were just like, hey, I've got some mad stuff to say, and then you were just like, <laughs> I'm on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot my name probably, that's what it really was. Um, so like, why, why don't you explain yourself a little bit more in terms of like, you know, what kind of alcohol do you like, What how do you sort of approach and sort of consume sure. alcohol? And then, like, what is, like, your general sort of, like, gist and background? Um, I'm predominantly a cider drinker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like well, kind of anything, really. It used to be. It used to be the old, you know, put anything in front of me and I'll, I'll drink it. But mostly cider, Guinness. Although it's really hard to find a good Guinness in Brighton. It is. I mean, there's a couple of good ones. I know... Molly Malone, Finches. They do a good one. Uh, Basket Makers Arms, I've heard, do a decent one. Mm -hmm. um, I, funnily enough, I, I know it's seen as a bit of a sketchy place and not on the odd occasion but uh, the railway bell I've had a couple of good Guinnesses in there before so the one by the station yeah don't never had a Guinness there to be fair I've yeah I mean I've mostly, had a cheap beer. Mostly, mostly I tend to have Stella because I think their Stella pints in there are like only like £3.50 or yeah, something yeah exactly that's cheap but um, their Guinness is alright um, um, but yeah today we're taking a look at something that is about as far removed from Guinness as possible Very and, much so. and this is something you've been hankering me to review on here for a while so um why don't you? Uh, and this is a double feature today, so we're reviewing two beers in one episode, um, which isn't common. But I figured, um, you know what? These are so unique and interesting that I've got to do them in the same episode. So why don't you introduce these? Um, so we'll start with we'll start with the cherry beer. Uh, this is Hungarian cherry ale. Um, it's pronounced so the M E G G Y is pronounced Mej. I'm yeah. probably butchering that, um, which is Hungarian for sour cherry. Yeah. Uh, this is probably my favourite uh, alcohol, alcoholic drink in the minute. I'm not a massive ale drinker or beer drinker, but um, it just hits the spot, really. Yeah. Yeah. But don't don't worry, you know, about um, sort of mispronouncing a Hungarian name. Oh, I'm going <laughs> Considering you're Anglo-Greek and I'm Anglo-Polish. So. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, uh, uh, an ex-partner of mine uh, is, uh, is Hungarian. Right. And um, so she introduced me to this amongst many other wonderful things from the Hungarian culture. But um, yeah, the, the the sour cherry beer was the one that kind of stuck. Nice. And I'll, I'll uh, talk a bit more about it when we, uh, when we start drinking it, really. And this is half a litre, it's alcohol percentage is 4%, and uh, how much was this one? Uh, 199. That's not bad yeah, for a pint. Yeah. That's all right. And then um, what about this one? Um, so yeah, this is a also Hungarian. It's a peach beer. Now I've never actually tried this one before. Um, it was recommended to me, but if anyone's ever had a uh, Jubal, which is also a peach beer, mm. um, if anyone drinks in Grand Central with Brian, which I, I have reviewed the peach one before, I think I reviewed the elderflower one as well. Okay, yeah, apparently it's basically the same, but the can's bigger, yeah. So, and that was also 199, so yeah, I just thought, why not? I imagine it's probably a bit more authentic because this particular brew was established in 1854, and this one. Was established in 1895. Okay. Um, and how much was this one? 1.99 as well. I tell you what, for like a pint, e even if it's in a can, that is still really good value oh, yeah. for money. And again, this is a half <laughs> litre, four percent alcohol volume. So, which one do you think we should try first? Uh, I so I've never had the peach one before. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should just start with that one because you've you've had a little sip of the cherry one in the past yeah. a while back. But yeah, I think you should start with the peach. All right, let's go with this one. Now, the design of the can, um, it's quite nice. I actually really like the, the contrast of sort of like shimmering sort of like orange against like this sort of dulled sort of cream colour with the black writing. It actually contrasts really well. And I'm tempted to give the design of the can like an 8.5, but I'm going to give it an 8 just because the arrows here are really confusing me. I'm like, why is that there? It kind of just looks like a lot of like, a, like demonetized YouTube symbols there. So it's kind of thrown me off a bit, but generally it's a nice design can, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. What do you think? Yeah, I quite like it. I've never actually 
Like I said, this is the first time I've actually seen the can up front. I quite like it. I like the cream. What do you, what do you mean you've seen it up front? What do you just like? Swing it off the shelves and just go. Well, no, no, because like I said, because I've never drunk that one before. Oh, you've never had this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I drink that one all the time. Um, so, yeah, so the first time I've held the can is when you and me went to just get it in the shop. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, so I was like, aha, I recognise that. So, what would you rate this out of 10? Uh, I quite like the design. I'd, I'd, I'd go with an 8 as well. I like the cream. Yeah. And um, the arrows are a bit weird. But, yeah. Alright, let's have a quick sniff to see what first impressions are like. So. Oh wow, yeah, it literally just smells like a stronger, juicier version of a Jebel peach beer. Um, have a quick sniff of it in the can. I think in the can it's got like a, just a very... Oh my god, yeah. It's a very simple but very strong nose, so I'll probably give it... It's sort of like this slight metallic tang which is kind of unavoidable in a can. Mm. So I'll give the nose a... probably like an eight and a half. I think like it's really nice. Obviously I think it will smell nicer outside of the can. Um, Once you let it air. Yeah, but I think also it's... While I like the sort of strength of the nose, <clears throat> I can definitely imagine some people being put off by how strong the nose is. Um, I don't know what you think. Um, I... Yeah. I... Well, like, you open a peach beer and it smells like peach, so I'd be... Yeah. I'd be more than happy with that. Okay. Uh, yeah. What would you rate the nose out of ten? Because I'm thinking okay. like eight and a half. Okay, nine? Okay. I've, I've come here for a peach beer and it smells like a peach beer. It does smell very much like the Jebel. Is that how you pronounce it? I was probably pronouncing it wrong. Jebel, I don't Jebel. know. <laughs> They're not nearly as much of a craft brewery as they think they are. Although, at the very <laughs> least, Jebel aren't as sort of like, um, uh, sort of <laughs> up, it about, up about it as a, what's their name, Brewdog. You know, yeah. Who kind of sort of think, oh, we're a craft brewery, even though we're one of the biggest breweries and corporate breweries in the world. Um, anyway, let's have a quick sniff of it in the glass. Okay, that's odd. I'm not sure about the smell of the glass. It doesn't smell quite as good. I did get it. It, yeah, it doesn't taste as um, contained. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, the, but yeah, the flavour is more balanced. And it feels a bit more spread out. But there's this weird sort of like acidic heat after yeah. smell in the glass that I'm really not sure about. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like, like I said, it, it feels like the, the peach scent was a bit more held together. Concentrated. In the can, yeah. I know, it smells all right, but I think in the glass it's, it's like a 6 out of 10. Not a terrible nose, but it's not mm. great either. Yeah, it definitely loses points. Um, okay, well let's first of all have ourselves a quick palate cleanser. Of course. So, um, the reason it's called, uh, fun fact, uh, well it looks like Barak. I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong as well, it's Barat. Yeah. Um, which is uh, very simply Hungarian for peach. Oh, nice. Uh, Utsi Barats, which I think is the full word, but yeah, so it's basically just like that, yeah. And also, um, cheers in Hungarian is uh, Ege Shigedre. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Why does it need seven syllables? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very long word. Imagine, imagine trying to say that with your Hungarian in-laws at, uh, at Christmas when you're, when you're five pints now. I thought celebrating a Rosh Hashanah at my grandma's house and speaking Hebrew was complicated, because, you know, obviously it's a language that's like about yeah, yeah. five to seven thousand years old, but... Hungarian is a different beast. Oh yeah, it's it's a, it's a hard language. Uh, yeah, quite nice sounding though. But yeah. Um, all right. Well, anyway, let's see what the sucker tastes like. So to everyone at home, bottoms up and have a good weekend ahead. There you go, sucker. Okay. Ooh, that is peachy. Yeah, it tastes stronger than a four percent as well. Mmm. It's, it's dark. It's almost like the texture is like a sort of like a dark ale, but then the sort of like end of the texture or like the finish of the texture at the end is kind of more like a um, more like sort of something like you know a Chabelle, something that's a bit simpler and mm. a bit more smoother. <laughs> As for the flavour, I think it's a bit like not syrupy perhaps, but it's it's very heavy. Mm. It's, yeah, it's, the texture is way heavier than I would expect, mm. like four percent, like fruity beer to be. Yeah. Um, nice look. Yeah, the flavour is refreshingly simple. It's just a sort of simple, slightly gold beer kind of flavour. Mm. Um, but the overwhelming flavour is this sort of juicy, sort of like uh, wet textured sort of a uh, peach that kind of feels almost like the flavour of like a peach after it's been roasted in the oven with a bit of cinnamon and brown sugar, that's kind of the impression I get. And then the texture 
it's a little bit muddled towards the end, but generally it's pretty smooth. And it kind of has the texture of kind of like a cross between, say, like a Gar Harvey's Gold Beer and like a crisp uh, Pilsner, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. I'd have to probably, I haven't had the Jabel in a while, so I'd probably have to have that again to compare which one I prefer. Mm. But I mean, for a bigger can. I think, yeah, I think if I went back and re reviewed Jabel, I'd probably say I prefer this a little bit more. Okay. Um, Jabel is good, but I think also Jabel is definitely stronger when it's uh, bottled or draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, I think it tastes just fine enough, uh, like in a can, to the point where I wouldn't need to seek out the draft or bottled version too much. No, of course. Although I'm sure it'd probably be a bit better, but. Um, What what kind of sort of keeps it the flavour and the sweetness from being too overwhelming is there's this tiny touch of like almost root like bitterness at the end mm. that kind of ties everything together. Yeah, so yeah. that's quite nice. Uh, so I think probably I'm gonna say um, be a nine actually. I really? Really, okay. I, really, I really, really enjoy this. This is one of the my favourite my gold standard for fruit flavoured beers is stuff like, you know, Belgian Creek or like mm -hmm. Belgian like Lindemann's apple style beer. But uh, outside of Belgian beers, this is probably the nicest like fruit beer I've ever had. Like the best ones I you know is probably ones from Belgium because like I said though that's my favourite country for sure. beers. But even still this is really solid stuff and I would thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. I'm probably leaning. A, I don't know. I'm a bit like I said. I'm a bit torn with which I pref what I prefer to the Jebel or that because I'm not like I'm not mad on beer. I think and I you can this. you can taste the beer more in the Jebel. So I feel like I prefer this. I think I prefer this. Yeah, style, yeah. Which is funny considering I'm more of an ale and beer drinker than you. Um, so yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. What would you rate this out of ten? Um, I'd give it an. <laughs> 8.5 That seems fair I was going to go between an 8.5 to a 9 yeah. So that seems I probably couldn't drink a lot of them in a row Yeah But um, for a start Yeah, pretty good Okay, so We'll go on to the next course of today's uh, selection Which is obviously um, uh, How do you pronounce this? Medj 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 um, I mean I was going to read the blurb But then I remembered Oh, hang on It's all in Hungarian Hungarian uh, I'm telling you, I, I speak very limited amount of that language and I couldn't even tell you what most of that says. <laughs> yeah, no, I forget that. <laughs> so, I will say, I think I prefer the can, design of the can here. It's simpler, I like the contrast of, sort of the gold and the white writing against the scarlet background. So I'll give the design of the can, honestly, like a good 10 out of 10. I like the fact that it's got the sort of like very, um, not embossed, sorry, the um, very stylized uh, insignia of the brewery there, uh, just above. Uh, the name, so yeah, I'll give that a solid ten out of ten. What do you think? Uh, well, I have I've been drinking this for just over a year, year and three months. So the, this can is kind of like a, a shining beacon yeah. for me. Can I go because the shop where we got it from, it sometimes sells out. So when it's not there, I feel very sad. But when it is there, it's like you know when John Travolta opens up the briefcase in Pulp Fiction and it's yeah. just glowing. That. I think what's a beer that I'm like that with? Probably Mythos. But mm. um, yeah, no, I know what you mean. So what would you rate it out of 10? Oh, just a 10. I love it. Yeah. It's simple. It's cherry flavour. It's the colour of cherries. Let's open this up and uh, right. have ourselves a quick snifter. God, yeah, it's, it smells like a um, particular version of Creek. It smells like Creek Boon, mm. which is a particular type of Creek, um, but a lot more sour. Um, so... I think I prefer the nose of this a little bit more than that one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give the nose for here. Honestly, like a nine. I really like the nose. I just, I just love it. Yeah. It's just so good. This is what I drank on Christmas last year. I had about seven of these. I do, vague, I do vaguely remember seeing your Instagram story and just seeing you look a bit haggard. <laughs> just cans of this on the floor. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like sort of with a slightly 
So, I just love it. With the, you know, your West Ham top just stained with like food and just like about a dozen of these scattered. It was, a, it was a West Ham Christmas jumper, I'll have you know. <laughs> yeah, by the way, uh, for context, uh, Ben is a massive West Ham fan. That was Wakanda forever, I mean that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm uh, regrettably a Charlton fan. My granddad was a Charlton fan, so it's fine. Yeah, at least he was around when... <laughs> yeah, he was around when they were decent. Yeah, when we were not shit. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway... So, Go ahead, what were you going to say? I was going to say, so this one, um, I, I, I was trying to remember last night, so I was trying to like think of when I was first exposed to this um, nectar. Yes. And it was, it was definitely in Hungary, and I think it was in a can. So we stayed in Budapest, um, and we went there, so if anyone's been to, been to that lovely city, um, just north of it, probably... A 20 minute drive is a man made beach called Looper Beach where some rich bloke made a lake, imported loads of sand, and made it like a just a place to get pissed, really. Yeah. Um, and they had this on draft. Oh, oh and it was lovely. It's, um... We went up to this bar, and I, I, it was like, like I said, with the shining light, I saw the, the, the thing on top of the draft, and yeah. I was like, oh my god. I obviously it's not the same thing but I remember I went to Ithaca <laughs> once uh, which is not mm, just yeah. off the coast of Greece and um, it was like this sort of like uh, pavilion that had clearly sort of been very detailedly designed like hundreds of years ago um, when the island was much less populated and uh, at the sort of like foyer part at the, like the back of the pavilion or, or um, plateau I guess we'd call it um they had Mythos and Alpha on draft, oh, nice. which are the two most popular beers in Greece. Yeah. And, and they served it to you in chilled, frosted glasses as well. And it was, oh. Yeah, I um, did you stay on Ithaca or did you stay on Kefalonia? Uh, it, a bit of both. Okay, actually. yeah, because I that, that was the island I lived on for like a month. Mm. So yeah, I, that's, I drank Mythos all the time, basically. I love <laughs> I, I love both those islands, to be fair. They're brilliant places. Yeah, they're beautiful. Now, let's have a quick snifter of this in the glass. You don't have to... You what? don't have to like do that. That's what you did. I'm doing what the expert does. When not each other. Okay, can. that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Sorry, I was copying the master. I'm doing this for nearly five years. <laughs> Actually to be fair, that does taste better if I it does smell better if I don't cover my nostril. Yeah. You I, know, weirdly enough, what this reminds me of in the glass is is um it really it's really, it's really weird. It reminds me of one year a few years ago, uh Hessen Blumenthal designed a limited edition cherry bakewell tart vodka for waitrose that they sold around Christmas. Okay. It really honestly, it smells like a more sour version of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it Yeah, it smells like a version of that crossed with like some like like strong gold beer, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel like it maybe suffers the same as the peach one. No, I think... Like, it kind of... Like, for me, it kind of loses its concentration of cherry. Yeah, I wouldn't say the nose is quite as good in the glass, mm. as similar to the peach one, but I would say <clears throat> it doesn't suffer from it quite as badly. Um, I'd say in the glass can, this is like... The nose of this is a nine. Mm. In the glass, I mean, it's still a respectable, I'd say, 7.25 out of 10. That, I would have gone 7.5, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's definitely weaker, but not it doesn't suffer from it quite as much as the peach one. So... Yeah. Uh, let's have ourselves a quick palate cleanser for this one as well. You with your terrifying two litre bottle of water. You know it. Why don't why you just be a responsible adult and just drink water from the glass normally? So, I... This is what Ted's talking about, if you want a proper view. Um, so I, I got it for work, and I used to have to go up to our kitchen at work like 20 times a day yeah. to fill up my glass. So I went, oh, I'll get one of those so I don't have to go up to the kitchen 20 times a day. Yeah. But now I have to go to the toilet 20 times a yeah. day. Because <laughs> I'm drinking two litres of water at work. Well, the thing, the reason why I don't get one of those is because I think the practical applications of it are actually really good. But I'm also just like, I like getting a, a sort of quick stretch out of my legs every yeah. like one, one and a half hours to get some water. So I'll do it if I fancy a Ribena. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, let's have a, let's see what the sucker tastes like. So to everyone at home again, bottoms up. Ginger. Mm. Cherry flavour isn't quite as strong as I remember it. The sourness at the end is stronger than I remember it. Um, 
probably going to be the worst person at the moment to ask questions because I'm just going to be gushing over this. I think... Just love it so much. I generally tend to prefer Belgian Creek more, but I can definitely see the appeal of this, for <laughs> sure. Um, this is nice. Yeah, it's just... Actually, now that we've had that peach one, this has a certain syrupy aspect to it as well, mm. which it's, I don't think I've ever noticed. It's more syrupy than Belgian mm. Creek. Mm. But at the same time, like the flavour is more mellowed out. Like, yeah. With Belgian Creek, the flavour is more vibrant and it's a bit tarter. But with this, I think like it's a little bit sweeter, but it's also more. Uh, yeah, it's it's just not it's not quite as vibrant. But I mean that in the way where it's like it just it, I don't know how, how to describe it. It's not dull, but it's just like it's a more sort of like it's a drink that you can more easily like knock back. I think. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I can definitely drink more of the cherry than the peach. Yeah. As I've <laughs> just explained with my six cans at Christmas. Yeah, I think this is definitely more digestible for yeah. sure. Um, that on a beach, when it's 30 degrees out in June mm. in Budapest, can't get better than that. I do think, though, you would have to chill this, though, because we didn't have this quite, like, icy cold, did we? Um, no, yeah, that one was just out of the fridge. That one's been in my bag all day. <laughs> but still, I mean, even at, like... <laughs> Just a little bit below room temperature. This is still really nice. I think, like, if it was cold, um, actually, room temperature is probably angling for like a seven. But if it's icy cold and in like a frosted glass, mm. then I'd say it probably could go up to like uh, like an eight and a half. Fair. What about you? Um. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty impartial. This is my favourite drink. I also I also know of its I've had it frosty, so I know of its capabilities. Mm. But yeah, I, it does it does lose it does lose a little bit with the room temperature. I probably should have put it in the fridge, but then knowing me I probably would have forgotten about it and we would have gone here and not like, had a can. Okay, so room what's your rating for it room temperature and then what's your rating for it in terms of like a seven point five? Nah, eight. And then what about if it was icy cold? Ten. Really, I love it. I love it so much. Like I said, I'm I'm very impa like impartial about this. Hmm. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's kind of like with me with like mythos. Like I can sort of obviously critically, ob <laughs> objectively like sort of review it, but it is my favourite lager. And um, and I, I also feel the same way with um, <clears throat> Aaron eighteen year single edge more. That's my favourite whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can try my best to review it critically, but I get at the end of the day, I'm just going to be gushing about it because. It is literally my favourite scotch. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think it also helps that I don't. Yeah, I don't like ale. I don't like beer. And it's one ninety nine, and it's what it's lovely, and it's a big can. It's like a pint. Yeah, I think that's the sort of the, the one of the definite sort of um, uh, strengths of these two beers is they both are unbelievably cheap um, for a half, for a big pint can. Yeah, that's really good value for money. Um, so like. You know, if I was just reviewing it on price alone, I probably would give it a ten. But I think combining that with the flavour, I'd probably say it is somewhere between like a seven to an eight and a half. But, but um, yeah. Anyway, if you guys like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Booze Cellar, let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see uh, Ben or any other guests uh, appear on the channel in the future, let me know again in the comment section down below, as well as any other particular points you may have agreed or disagreed with. If you um, want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the lo links to my social medias in the video description. Below? Down below. It's the beer that's gone to your head. Yeah, it's just, I keep having these brain farts towards the end of each episode. It's alright, it's because you're enjoying it too much. Yeah, um, definitely too much. Um, I was. Oh yeah, and then until next time, have fun, stay safe for whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, drink responsibly, know your limits, and we'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booster. What's, uh, what's goodbye in Hungarian? Uh, see ya. See ya. And what about Greek? Ooh, uh, don't ask me that. <laughs> Yeah. I know hello. <laughs> What's it? Kalimara. But I don't know goodbye. It's about two syllables too much. Yeah, um, it is, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway.